Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Rich Dotson. He's Matt O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Garrett Price. How's it going? It's going swell. We got a second show here in the season. Football's about to start tomorrow. I'm going to Vegas on Friday. Going to get real frisky and risky. Might come home with a new husband. Who knows? It's Vegas. Well, you know, whatever happens to Vegas comes home with me. So It's going to uh, be Bowers. You're going to be married to Bowers is what it is. Are you kidding me? I'm trying. <laughs> Keep it on the towel. Max was my best friend and best man. Come on now. <laughs> Ruin the wedding surprise. Hope he says yes. Um, so in this episode... Segments we're going to cover are, is he cooked? You know, is a player that's so far, no bueno on the year. You know, are we going to go ahead and put him in the oven, put a thermometer and see if he's cooked? Possibly. Second segment we're going to do is the buy and week, and then we're going to have a sell of the week as well. So that's our second show today. Tomorrow, we're doing trade questions on the oh, nerds. Yeah. All the nerds are going to be sending their trades, and me and Gary are like, ah, oh, you got burned, or ah, oh, this is very fair, or Oh, you just smoked You're that guy. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So those are the only three it. options. We won't give any analysis. There's just those three. Oh, oh you got burned. Build me up, baby. Don't talk me down. You need that on a hot key. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got burned. <laughs> <laughs> Not do. again. <laughs> Where's Jared with the hot keys when we need him? All right. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you get burned. It doesn't try to be a burn. I remember Matt was talking last week. Him and I, we had a big trade go down. Uh, he was, a, we were doing the Dobbins trade, and he's like, "Man, there's this one trade I didn't like a lot." Where the one of the original owners at the time, and this is like right around accident time, or he traded Bijan Robinson for okay. two first. This is a one QB league, two first, and Rishi Rice. At the time, we're like, "Man, this guy's always consistently making bad trades, giving up Bijan Robinson." And I was thinking about that um, the other day, watching Rasheed Rice play football. And I was like, man, I think I'd much rather have Rasheed Rice in those two first right now than B. John Robinson. Well, but not just you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were criticizing that guy and go, the, hit the burn hockey, hit the burn hockey. You <laughs> oh, you got burned. And now, oh, and now it's like, got- oh, man, that ice feels good. Now ice is Rasheed <laughs> Rice. Icy hot. All right. Uh, is he cooked? Yeah. Is he cooked? So basically what we're looking at here is we're looking at seven players that had decent offseason value. Some of them real high, some of them just solid assets. Uh, but so far this season, they have majorly disappointed. And what we need to know is, can they regain that value that they would have had preseason? Or is that value dead and gone? They're never going to see that type of value again. That's it's You can almost bury them at this point. So, so seven players. Is it basically, is he cooked or he just needs defrosted? Yes. Is he cooked or just or, defrosted? <laughs> or is he like a, is he like a hot dog where, yeah, he was cooked, but yeah, maybe you can put him back in and it's still okay. <laughs> Cause all the hot dogs are pre-cooked anyway, and you could eat them raw if you wanted <laughs> to, but <laughs> the endless cookable hot dog. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and by cook, I mean microwave <laughs> as many times as you would like. Just do it again. Garrett, I don't like how much um, Rich is rubbing off on you and your weird analogy. <laughs> I know. I you saw really- a cat earlier. I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've boiled this hot dog six times already. <laughs> it's still cold. <laughs> Why do you keep making so many hot dogs? We're not eating them all at one time. Uh, Anyways, I, I, are they cooked? All right, let's start off with the first one here. And you know what? I'm going to do two at the same time. I'm going to cheat to start off because these two guys go hand in hand. And it's this passing attack for the Indianapolis Colts. So we're going to put Anthony Richardson and Michael Pittman Jr. together. So let's start with Pittman. Uh, Wide receiver 70 right now at 6.6 points per game. Uh, the, the, The passing volume for this team has been like way down. Like way, way low. Uh, Anthony Richardson, he's currently quarterback 14, which doesn't sound terrible, uh, but that's held up by a 27-point week one. 
Uh, he hasn't been running as much or as effectively as we would have expected. And like I said, the, the, the passing volume for this team is down very low. So Michael Pittman Jr., Anthony Richardson, is there any hope of them going back to the rough value that they would have had in the preseason where Anthony Richardson, we're looking at quarterback seven, quarterback eight, Michael Pittman Jr. I had him higher than most people, but most people would have had him somewhere between wide receiver 14 to 18. Like, is there any hope of that or are they cooked? I mean, I think there's, there's still hope that Anthony Richardson will get injured and Joe Flacco comes in and <laughs> Michael Pittman Jr. <laughs> has, has a return to value. It's it's the the Cleveland Brown situation all over again. That's that's the only hope that I have that Michael Pittman's going to be useful this year. I just listen. I I don't. What I've seen of Anthony Richardson this year has just been bad. Everything I've seen of yeah. him has been awful. Um, he looks and, different than last year. Like he doesn't look like the same player. For sure, and you know, when when a guy only only has very limited amount of college games started there can be a very rough transition to the nfl and sometimes it just does not work out i don't know if anthony richardson is there yet in my brain because i think he's athletically gifted they just need to they need to tailor this thing to him a little bit more and get him moving and stuff like that and on the run a little bit more um he needs something to build his confidence and he, his completion percentage right now is under 50 percent. there's only been 73 pass attempts which, you know, I, we mentioned Los Angeles Chargers um, last show at 66, and they were, you know, second least. Well, 73 is is the fourth least. And, and so it is a very low-volume passing game as well. I just – I don't know how they can do more when he's looking that bad doing it. So I, I, just, I just don't know, man. Um, so my confidence le- level on, on Anthony Richardson, I feel like he's pretty cooked. And Michael Pittman's cooked until Anthony Richardson either gets injured or is benched um, in, in, in kind of pulled for, for the, the veteran. Rich? Yeah, for Michael Pittman Jr., I think his woes all come from what Matt said is Anthony Richardson. You know, he's just – he's so erratic. Like I said, the, the passes he's he hits more are the ones to Alec Pierce are deep downfield, right? Like that's where he's like hit the most. Like – Everything else, he's been very erratic, uh, not very accurate with the football. And, and the worst part of it from a fantasy football standpoint is he's not getting those like big rushing games, like the offset. It's like they're not throwing the football and he's out there like running for 60 yards a game, even like give me 40 yards a game. He's not even doing that. So for me, like I'm worried, but at the same time, he's only like Matt said, he this guy kid hasn't played a lot of football, missed all, all of last year. He's only 22 years old, still came in the league very, very young. Uh, the the play at, at this level, and I I don't know what they have to do to get him right. I'm not ready to panic uh, yet because basically, like this is what we expected to see early out of Anthony Richardson, outside of like not seeing the Russian ability. Right? Like we expect him to come in and rush. And I don't know if it's a shoulder and like, hey, maybe you know, let's keep it safe here uh, for a while. And they're telling him not to run, but. You know, we knew it's going to take time for him to put together as the actual NFL quarterback and him only playing those couple games last year. Like to me, this is his rookie season. So I'm not ready to panic yet and say he's cooked, but like it's very concerning. <laughs> yeah. When you, I mean, you're right. Like even where he's at right now, he's just he had that first big week. And ever since then, it's it's gotten worse. Where like other rookie quarterbacks that are a couple of years his senior are just ascending week in, week out, uh, possibly become the, the, the number two, number three overall startup player in a super flex league like Jane Daniels, but like it's bad and there's no signs of improvements. I mean, you can almost argue he's gotten worse every single week. He's gotten worse out there on the field. So, and unfortunately for Michael Pittman, there's no rapport and it's not like Michael Pittman's not out on the field. Like he's running them, he's leading the team in routes, yeah, even there. with, yeah, even with Josh Downs coming back in, I mean, they split it, uh, their target share the other day was both 25%. So it's there. It's just, there's no connect whatsoever with Anthony Richardson. So I think Michael Pittman for 2024 has a very strong chance of being cooked for fantasy football value. Uh, and you're waiting until 2025, hoping for the rebound, but he's going to see a massive ADP drop uh, here over the next couple months. Yeah. He, he's seen a massive drop in my rankings and I was, I was high on Michael Pittman Jr. Like I liked him in the few games that we saw. We didn't see 
anything concerning last year. So I wasn't overly worried uh, about Michael Pittman Jr.'s value. And, and man, that looks dead wrong right now, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I'm I'm with you, Rich. I'm not quite ready to throw in the t- like. I, I'm throwing in the towel on Michael Pittman's value, at least for this year. He's still young enough that he could rebound in his career, but I don't think he ever sees that mid to high end wide receiver two value anymore. Like he might be done as far as that goes, but uh, low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three. Like I think he could regain that type of status uh, dynasty wise. But as far as Anthony Richardson goes, it is it is still fairly early in his career. This is what game six that he just started. So it is fairly early in his career. uh, And he's had a, not the easiest schedule so far. And and unfortunately he's got another tough one this week in Pittsburgh. So it might get worse before it gets better. Uh, But I'm kind of keeping an eye on that because if there's another down week this week, he actually, according to Fantasy Pros, has a really favorable next three weeks after that. Jacksonville, Tennessee, Miami, all very favorable matchups for the quarterback. And his playoffs are Denver, Tennessee, and the New York Giants. So nothing too scary there either. So there is an opportunity, I think, for him to bounce back and get comfortable in this offense. It could just be some early season struggles trying to get back into a normal rhythm of playing. So I'm going to go cooked for Michael Pittman Jr., but I don't think I'm going cooked with Anthony Richardson. Ah, yeah. uh, man, this one, this one's rough. Uh, DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift has been uh, has been pretty tough. Uh, he's averaging six and a half points per game. That's full PPR. Uh, that's not standard scoring, folks. That's full PPR. Six and a half points per game average, and hasn't had a single double-digit game in the first three weeks. Uh, he's had the touches, you know, because that was one of the things I was like, man, maybe he's just not getting the ball as much as I think he's getting the ball. So I went and looked. Nope, he's getting 12 to 16 touches like every single game so far. So he's he's getting the work. And even this week, before this game, Indianapolis was rated as the worst run defense. They had given up the most yards. They had lost to Forrest Buckner, their, their top inside defensive tackle there. And still, DeAndre Swift, just total dud, total dud. So, guys, Swift, he got the big contract in the offseason from the Bears, but uh, is he cooked? Yeah, he just might be cooked. He was getting a lot. I mean, you, you mentioned his 6.5 points per game uh, in PPR leagues. And the first two weeks, like he was getting a majority of the share, uh, the rushes, being involved in the passing game. And this week, already in week three, like he was cut in half. Like he was only getting in there fifty percent of the time, just not getting it done from a fantasy football. Uh, you know or, what you need real, and where you're investing. Or a real football perspective, Rich. He's not getting it <laughs> right, done, man. Either yeah, way. It, yeah. I mean, yeah, which equates to no fantasy football production as well, I guess. So for me, I. And he's just a player that we thought in Philly, you know, his hometown, like he looked decent at times, but still didn't put up a, a, a big year there as well. We thought getting this Chicago offense with having a rookie quarterback that made they, they get him more involved in the short passes and behind a, a good offensive line. But none of that's come to fruition as well. We talk about the running back position all the time being so fluid. Anytime there there's a negative regression on something that you don't feel is going to turn into positive regression sometime soon soon you it's a it's a massive drop off like you're just better off looking elsewhere to, to fill that plug and deandre swift to me would fall into an extremely cooked position could he turn around like i mean yeah like in the next few weeks in offense for sure but there's nothing shown us in the first three weeks to tell us that that's what's gonna happen in this offense definitely if caleb williams really starts to cook a little bit more uh and keen allen coming back as well I mean, he's averaging 1.84 yards per carry. 1.84. <laughs> he had a 12-yard loss this week. I was like, this is this just epitomizes this season so far this year. <laughs> I, I've mentioned Zach Charbonnet as a guy that wasn't averaging even a yard per carry before contact. DeAndre Swift is at 0.41 yards <laughs> per carry. <laughs> yards per average per four contact like give me a break dude <laughs> point four wow so yeah that's that's brutal those numbers stink happy for as you. a guy that as a guy that has deandre swift on a couple of teams that i thought i'd be contending in this year and i've been starting him i thought i was going to be contending 
<laughs> <laughs> so there. I, mean, I, I have some leagues. He's on my bench. Enough said. I mean, enough said. Like I, I can't start the dude, and I'm looking elsewhere, and it's just ridiculous. He's he's completely ineffective in my eyes. He's cooked. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you wanted to trade DeAndre Swift right now, you'd be. Would you be happy to get a second? Would be yes. ecstatic. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, and, that, and that shows you. Like it's like, and some people are like, wow, I need more than a second for DeAndre you, you Swift. Buy, but like, you, you, you don't. You want to buy him? You want to buy him, Rich? <laughs> No, no, thank you. I, again, I have him in my leagues, and he is on my bench. So, yeah. unless uh, unless one of my run, running backs all of a sudden joins the San Francisco 49ers, I think I think <laughs> I'm good right now. Oh man! Dang. All right, let's go to the next one here. Uh, Mark Andrews did not expect him to be on this list to start the year, but man, it has been. I mean, you could argue he's the most disappointing player on this list. Uh, he did have tightrope surgery in the offseason, which they haven't come out and said that that has had some sort of an effect. But I, I do wonder uh, if that's playing into this at all. But this week only played 33% of the snaps. That's gross. Like that like is disgusting. I don't understand how that's even possible for somebody that just a couple years ago was tight end one overall in fantasy football and consistently finishes in the top three when healthy. Like this is this is absurd to me. But right now, I have zero faith in Mark Andrews. So guys, can he turn this around or is he done? Like, is he cooked? Is he not a legit fantasy asset anymore? I don't know. Rich, you start. <laughs> yeah, Rich, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's Mark Andrews at all. I, I mean, honestly, I think it's well. One, you know, they even asked they asked the head coach after the game. They're like, "Hey, you yeah. know, what's up with Mark Andrews getting one target, no catches?" And they're like, "Yeah, that game just requires running like a lot of power." Um, and we know, like this offensive line right now. We mentioned in the preseason show, like well, I was worried about Derrick Henry because this offensive line losing those three offensive linemen, uh, you know, a really good right tackle, Kevin Zeitler, a real good guard. That it wasn't going to be uh, a, a good offensive line. And Mark Andrews again asked to block. He he's blocking right now, guys. Going to I saw a stat online. Um, I can't remember. I think it was might be even Scott Bear. I can't remember who I saw from, but saying like that Mark Andrews had never played. Um, he never blocked more than two percent in any of his careers, like ever, like in any of the years he's ever played. He's at thirty three percent right now. Uh, blocking so they're actually staying have him stay in line or he's blocking more not even targeting him a lot for a team that already doesn't throw the football an absolute ton uh, as it is not a very efficient passing offense they're just asking him to come back like in that that dreaded role of the offensive line helping out there where they have the holes mostly on the right side so for me like it's hard to say that mark andrews cook because it gets like this could switch it any moment but if they're going to keep asking to do what he's doing and basically not go out and run receiving routes and see a 10 percent target share then he's absolutely cooked uh if that's the case he's so talented and they need like obviously with a record uh right now like they they almost got <laughs> came back on by the dallas cowboys like i think they, they need did. to get mark andrews involved uh if they're going to really want to compete here in the afc in the afc and those are all great points. I guess what I'll add to that is when Mark Andrews was a guy that we were talking about as like a number one, number two tight end type of guy overall, it was, he was the, the option in the offense. Um, he was the number one guy. He was the number one pass catcher right now. He's just not, there's, there's other guys on this team that they're trying to get the ball to. They're spreading the ball around quite a bit more than they used to. Um, so there's just more options and, and that's on top of the fact that they're asking him to block more. So, th um, th this is a, this is a tricky one. I don't think he's, um, cooked per se as a player, but I think right now his value is going to be hard to nail down week to week. So I think you, unfortunately from a fantasy perspective are going to have a hard time starting him with confidence until he's strung together two, three, four weeks in a row where he's had solid production and you could see him being a solid part of this offense week in and week out. And the hard part for him is to go back to being a top three or four tight end that we rank in dynasty to, to for him to get back there. 
he's going to need a lot of these young guys to continue to fail. And we already saw Dalton Kincaid kind of come out of the ashes last night, and he had a good game uh, for Buffalo there. And Brock Bowers is obviously he's playing pretty well. So it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for him to regain that kind of value. Maybe he can kind of settle into that George Kittle range that he's been in for the past three or four seasons where good player, but not considered one of these top tier elite guys. Uh, but it, it's tough to see him go back. Speaking of an elite guy, uh, tough to find a receiver that's been more elite over the past three or four seasons than Tyreek Hill. But this is the first time in his career, uh, honestly, his entire career, that he has not had an above average quarterback. And now he has a well below average quarterback. And his numbers are way down without Tua. Uh, single digit points both the past two weeks. So, guys, is is Tyreek Hill cooked, or are we just are we just buying our time until until Tua comes back? He's absolutely not cooked. Uh, and, and listen, they're gonna put Snoop Huntley in there. I think Matt and I talked about this on an injury show. Like I told him, I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if Snoop Huntley, pro former Pro Bowler Snoop Huntley, uh, is the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins this Sunday. And Skylar Thompson's just terrible, and he's bringing down everyone around him. And Tyreek Hill is just way too good. It was uh, deer in the headlight. He's also injured. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he got injured. He's got well, the he injury. Is. Tim Boyle yeah. came in. He looked exactly the same. Both those guys stunk. Nobody scored over double digit points or sco- even scored double digit points on that entire team in PPR formats. So, yeah. I mean, he's not. Terry Hill, in my opinion, isn't cooked. It's just going to be a matter of time until Tua comes back. That's when you can rely on his value week in and week out. I would hope. Huntley, if he gets in there, learns the offense very quickly, can be better than those other guys. And 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 you know, obviously, I said this on the, on the injury show, and I'll say it again, Rich. All, any one of these guys on on their roster, not just Tyreek Hill, anyone on their roster, uh, Jalen Waddle, uh, um, um, Tyreek Hill, Javon obviously, A-chan. Javon Achan, they can pop a big play and score you ten points, like on a, on any one play. So I mean I I don't expect there to be them to be shut out uh, from double digits the rest of the way, but I just think it's gonna be hard to rely on these guys until what, two comes back and that whole offense is kind of cooking again. Would you say now? I thought about putting him in our potential buy segment, uh, but we we had other guys and I thought he fit good into this. But is he kind of an elite buy low right now from an owner that's that's maybe panicking or you know they thought they were a contender, but crap now I'm one and two and Tyreek's not been, like is is he the, t- the a great time to buy on a guy like this yeah I think in the right league you know obviously you know people there's we're talking literally tens of thousands of leagues so you'd imagine there's for sure scenarios in there where people had Tyreek Hill who's currently underperforming because of his quarterback situation had a couple running backs had AJ Brown uh, had Christian McCaffrey that thought they were going to be contenders in, in 2024 because obviously three weeks ago your team looked really strong and now out of it. And I think Tyreek Hill f- perfectly falls in that for a team that's 0 3 with no, no, no optimism and say, hey guys, I'm just ready to blow this up. Like this is a player you can get for probably a first round pick and yeah, maybe a little bit more, but first and second might possibly get it done. Uh, depending on your league sc- scoring format. And if you go below late first for Tyreek Hill, and it's just the next, worth so you it. get two years of Tyreek Hill production, that's worth a first all day. Because if if Snoop Huntley come in there and gets any kind of sufficient quarterback play, you're talking about on a weekend, week out basis to top overall fantasy football score at the wide receiver position. Uh, you get that kind of upside is what you get in your lineup. So definitely a good buy if, that, if that's the realm that you live in is where that contender is kind of out of it. And I think after week four, you'll have a way better understanding that that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to the tight end position. Uh, we know it's, it's been ugly overall, uh, but another older guy that just has not been getting it done so far this season, not quite to the, the Mark Andrews throw up in your mouth levels, but still pretty bad. Travis Kelsey, he had his best game of the season so far. This and it was seven PPR points, like still well under par for what you would expect from a guy like Travis Kelsey. Uh, Rich, I know that you've been wanting to get him off your teams. You've been talking about that a little bit since uh, week for one. You, I said, I said, is, is he cooked? Gotta go. 
Yeah, I said after week one, I literally I was like, hey, we were talking about the cells. I was like, listen, I don't want to sound like I'm premature here and like freaking out after one game, but like I'm real concerned about Travis Kelsey and the rest of the year. And I know it's just like even after just a game, but it's like it, it continued kind of where we saw last year. I know he had a good playoff game, but kind of like it, even last year, like he just kind of faded down the end and just wasn't really involved in his pot this offense and with the emergence of Rasheed Rice there and and kind of taking over those middle routes it, it makes me extremely concerned I think Travis Kelsey is cooked uh I I said before even a couple of weeks ago I said like to the point where like if I said this two weeks ago it'd probably be harder to do it now like if you can get David and Joku for like Travis Kelsey like I'd who's hurt like I'd rather probably just do that that Travis Kel- have Travis Kelsey. That's how concerned I was then. So here we are now at a later time. And yeah, not, I think it's almost getting to the point where it's burnt beyond cooked, like where there's <laughs> no coming back almost like what you're, you're like, you're going to get like, Hey dude, Kate Otten's getting a good target share over there. <laughs> like I need to get some <laughs> oh, in my lineup. Dude. Yeah, I'm. I, it's, I'm it's, scra- it's possible. I'm scrape. I'm scraping that burnt toast. It's fine. It's still edible. Travis <laughs> Kelsey, he's gonna be all right, man. Listen. I'm not saying to make that move. I'm saying those are the kind of offers you're gonna get for him. Like, that's all you're gonna get back. <laughs> Listen, there are gonna be better days for Travis Kelsey. I think you know, are are the days of him being the number one tight end gone? Yeah, likely th- those are probably over. But you know, he's got how many like. 80, 80 yards tops or something like that. Probably not even 80 yards on the season. That's going to, he can make that up in one game and, and, and double that up in just one nice game. There's going to be a point when it tilts. There's going to be a, there's going to be a point where this tilts. Everyone's going to start covering Rasheed Rice. They're going to be double. They're going to start rolling coverage his way. They're going to start biting on some more of this stuff to, to worthy. And it's going to leave Travis Kelsey open. He can still operate. He can still catch the ball. He still knows how to get open. They're going to have better days ahead for Travis Kelsey. So I don't want to completely say that he is toast. I mean, his days of being the difference maker at the tight end position might be cooked. Those might be cooked, but he's still going to touch wide receiver one numbers. And and I would I would expect that to kind of start clicking pretty soon. Um, and is, it's probably not going to be as consistent as it was just because there's better options on the team, more explosive options on the team. But there's still going to be days when when it's a Travis Kelsey day and he scores a couple t- touchdowns and he's just he's he's he gets more involved just because of the way that they're covering other guys. Yeah, but dude, you're, here's the thing: you're like, yeah, there's gonna, dude, there's going to be a game. Like one of these games, there's going to be a game <laughs> that he's going to do this. In the meantime, I got I got to set a lineup every single week and, and put something out there. And right now, like, dude, if you okay. If you have Travis Kelsey on your on your roster and you got Mike Kosicki, who are you starting this week? I'm starting Mike Kosicki. If you have I'm Hunter Henry Kelsey. or Travis Kelsey, who are you starting? I'm starting Hunter Henry, dude. Dude, Hunter You're Henry and his, two, and his and his two nine two point nine points that he got me last week instead of hey, Dalton Kincaid. I made that it's, mistake. It's, all right, dude. Don't you dare he, trust Hunter Henry. Don't he, you dare. He got it. The ball could have got kicked out to start the game. He get a call from his wife that she's pregnant and left the game, and he'd still have more points than Travis Kelsey by Get a significant amount. So That's not true. Mean? Kelsey had seven. That's not even true. Yeah, this uh, one's about right. total on the year. All right. All right, let's get to the last one here. And Michael Pittman Jr., I didn't love putting that one down because I like Michael Pittman Jr. a lot. This one ripped the heart out of my chest. I did not want to do it. But, hey, I got to be fair, and Javante Williams is on the potentially cooked list here. Look, running oh, back 38, uh, averaging insane. only seven points per game. McLaughlin's been involved. Tyler Beatty uh, was Tyler Beatty was actually, looks better than him. He, he does. Look, as a guy that has a favorite Williams sweatshirt, uh, as a guy that has him on – somewhere around 50% of my teams like he's cooked he's cooked and part of it's part of it's the injuries part of it's this Denver offense part like every bad break that could have happened to this kid happened and it's just there's no coming back at this point there's just not like he's done the hopes of him even being an RB2 at this point are dead like it's done it's over stick a fork in him I'm sad I'm depressed I might not be able to finish the show. 
So in both those leagues, in the league where I was talking about Devon, uh, uh, DeAndre Swift, I also have Javante Williams. So I was hopeful with oh. both of those guys, and they oh. have both draft the bed in both of those leagues. And one of those leagues, I also have Mark Andrews. So that's the one I'm 0-3 in, by Ugh. the way. <laughs> so, yeah. It's been a rough start to this season. Listen, it's been a weird start to this season, and it's been a rough start, especially if you're counting on guys like Javante Williams, who is completely cooked, man. He just – there's just no juice there anymore. I think – I mean, I think that the, the, the injury zapped all this dude's explosiveness. All his burst is just gone. What, what yeah. is that the bell? The dinner bell? That's a dinner bell. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, – dinner's ready. Javante's cooked. Everything you guys said, he's just he, there's his staff shares even starting to go down. You know, for somebody who was um, getting like at least half the touches, he was down to what twenty five percent of shares like that. Yeah. Uh, this week. So that not a good look. You know, and we know how Sean Payne could be. Like he'll just he'll just move on to another guy and favor that situation. So all sounds are pointing like this is DOA. <sighs> Breaks my heart. Hey, Nerd Herd, Dynasty Nerds has an incredible new offer from Underdog Fantasy for new customers. When you sign up as a new customer, you'll get a chance at their new customer free pick. But that's not all. Underdog is also offering incredible deposit bonuses. Use the promo code NERDS when you first sign up, and Underdog will give you up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit. That's right, $1,000 to kickstart your fantasy football journey. Don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity. Head over to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog app. Sign up today with promo code NERDS and start your journey to fantasy football glory today. Must be 18, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www ncpgambling.org in Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in New York, call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY and in Tennessee, call 1-800-889-9789 Breaks my heart. All right, let's go to better days. Let's talk about players that we want to buy. Players that uh, maybe their value isn't quite where we think it could be or should be at some point very soon. We had three great candidates but uh, but Matt, you want to tell us who we went with? Because I know this is your favorite player probably ever. Uh, so I want you to do the honors of, of telling us who our buy of the week is. I was, well, I was wondering why you're, you're asking me to introduce this guy. Uh, but DJ Moore, of course. Yeah, uh, great call, Matt. Is, great job. Is the, is the guy that we all want to buy this week. <laughs> all three of us. <laughs> All right, Listen, DJ Moore. Yeah, yeah go, go, go ahead, ahead, Matt. Tell us. No, no, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. All it'll right, sound better on your voice. I, it, won't, it won't sound so angry coming out of your voice. <laughs> There's a bitter taste as you're saying it. Uh, DJ yeah. Moore, look, D, I, I think DJ Moore is a really good buy right now. Uh, he hasn't necessarily had that boom game yet, but we're starting to see better signs uh, from, from Caleb Williams. And he's actually been quietly very consistently solid he's averaging nearly 10 targets a game uh and he's gotten double digit points every game so he hasn't had any game where you're like dang it i had him in my lineup this week like nope he's just been steady eddie he's been very solid 10 points 15 points 14 points like he's just been very solid very steady but that boom game is coming when you're averaging nearly 10 targets per game like you can't help but accidentally get a big game here and there. So I love the usage uh, for this team right now, and I love that Caleb Williams is starting to look a little bit better. So this is a player that I think his value is a little bit depressed right now, but I, but I could see it ballooning up a little bit here soon. Rich, I know you've been a big DJ Moore guy over the years. What are your thoughts on him being our buy of the week? Yeah, it's fine. It's just I, sometimes I have a hard time in these situations because – like I always just kind of like try. I have so many DJ Moore shares. Like, and it's still I, I just can't fathom. Can't like, buy more, more. No, no. I want. I no. I want all the more I can get. I want more, more. And <laughs> it's just like for me. I. It's like I. I don't know where that. Uh, that perceived value 
of him being like down value it would be coming from like if there's any down value in dj Moore, i'd definitely buy buy him 100 well he was so, down like, all off season because of romo dunze keenan allen like uh -huh. he was down all off season yeah but i thought that got like a little bit uh elevate like you know when when he signed that co big contract extension uh the biggest contract extension in bears history i thought that kind of would have like eased some of that a little bit but maybe not and, and right now yeah i mean he is performing as like a wide receiver three so for somebody who finishes a wide receiver one last year i guess you could definitely say his value is down but he's like red he's been so steady for me on my teams i haven't really looked at him that way it's like oh man like this is somebody like i can go out and get so from that perspective yeah i mean i'd be willing to pay a late first easily for dj moore if I'm a contender and DJ Moore is kind of just like waiting there on a team, maybe you might have to wait till after this week as well. Um, Cause sometimes people, these are like the, DJ Moore falls in the category of a player. Like some people aren't just apt to like just sell right away. Right. Like, Oh, like it's week three. I'm, I'm owing three and one, three. Like most people are going to want to get, give it another week before they really start to blow up teams. But if I can get DJ Moore anytime from the next couple of weeks here for first round and only 27 years old and just sign that big extension tied to Caleb Williams. Like I think him and next year to, with Roman Dunze and Rome's already showed uh, that could be an alpha one. I think pulling that coverage his way, I think it really help DJ Moore even more going forward. So I'd absolutely pay a first if I'm a contender and get probably two to three more years of potential wide receiver one production or like even worst case for what he's mostly been like a, a very solid wide receiver too, but a championship caliber player nonetheless. So I mean, right now here's, here's two players that are going uh, right around the same range as him. Brandon, Ayuk, DK Metcalf, who would you want of those three players? I'd probably go Ayuk first, DJ Moore second, then DK Metcalf. What about you, Matt? So Stop. hard. I'm so down. I'm so down on anyone that I have on my teams right now, and I have Brandon Ayuk on my team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my me too. Team. It was it, it rough for me <laughs> to say him first, but like I really do think he's going to turn it around here. Like now yeah. he's actually getting like warmed up. You got the but you're right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Ask me next week. It's easy to be DJ Moore one or DK. Yeah, DK Metcalf. Those guys are really close, and 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 DK Metcalf did just ball out. Um, so I I, I in my my first inclination was to say DK Metcalf first um, and then maybe even DJ Moore and then Brandon Ayuk because I'm so down on my own players right now. Wow, the Ayuk hates <laughs> strong if you're putting behind DJ Moore. And that's yeah. funny. So we all three different had a number one because I had it DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, Brandon Ayuk. So that's funny if we all had different uh, orders. I like both your orders too, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so put them in any here. order. The yeah, answer is I mean, yeah. To me, the, the pressure point that could lead somebody to to want to get rid of DJ Moore is Romo Dunze and, and and him having the emergence and kind of the big kind of coming out game this past week. Um, obviously, he Romo Dunze right now is leading the team in air yards. He's got over three hundred, like we mentioned, uh, and and I think he's just he's just nipping at his heel. I can't find it. I can't find the um, actual yard numbers, but there. DJ Moore is a slight edge as far as the yards, but it's not, it's only maybe by 10 yards or so. That's despite the fact that he has like eight, eight uh, 28 targets to like 18 or 19 or something like that to, to for Romo Dunze. So it's, it's got some weird numbers and, and, and obviously DJ Moore is getting a much lower a dot um, and, and less air yards um, per attempt than a guy like Romo Dunze. So all that stuff could lead people to to think, hey, Romo Dunze, this thing's kind of tilting his way, which might open up a buy window for DJ Moore. And I do think he's going to be a solid asset. So, um, you know, if you're getting him at any sort of discount because he's operating right now as a wide receiver three, I think it makes it, I make, it makes for a good buy um, for DJ Moore. And he's not even a player I love that much. So I still think it's a, it's a nice buy opportunity. Sweet. Rich. Tell us who our uh, well, actually, you had one other guy that you you wanted to throw into this uh, this list. Oh, here. yeah. When I was like you know looking at all of the watch, you know, going back and watching these Chargers games and watching Quentin Johnson, one thing that comes away, even though the production's not there, uh, is Lad McConkey for the LA Chargers. 
right now not producing at a high level whatsoever. But when it comes to a part of like just, you know, air yards and being part of the offense, like Lam McConkey is still lean at lead team with over 30% of the target share out there, uh, even over Quinn Johnson. So we, we his production is kind of these blown plays, but when you watch, if you like, just go back and watch like some all 22 NFL plus of like Lab McConkey, like he's just getting open consistently. It's just him and a quarterback aren't connected. And so I, I hate putting rookies on here, like three weeks into a season where somebody just took this player probably in the first round of the rookie draft. Like, so it's really hard to make him like a true buy because people aren't just going to abandon ship so quickly after three weeks. But for me, if there's any window to make like a lateral move for like another rookie uh, that you may have drafted, maybe like you said, maybe this person has Brees Hall and it, they're excited about Braylon Allen and you can get Braille, give up Braylon Allen in a first if you're a contender um, to get a lab McConkey. Definitely with like right now the receiving class, we don't know how strong it's going to be. I think Matt, Lab McConkey has not only clearly shown that he's a, could be a focal point in his offense with his target share, but it's more so go back and watching the tape and seeing that like Lad McConkey is just consistently getting open and beating NFL coverage. So that's what I like to see as well. So where the numbers aren't there, I definitely see a situation where there's going to come. And I'm not saying this is like a cheap buy by any means, but again, you know what do I always say? What's an overpaid today could be an underpay tomorrow. So if you give like return the favor of that first and give something on first, that's like on top of that first, it's exciting. I've seen enough already after kind of like three weeks, just like I've saw enough out of Jane Daniels to move my third overall player. <laughs> I've already moved him up one spot. You've and, already moved him up uh, since last year. I, I, I think Lab McConkey falls in that category, or at least like he's like one of those players I'm bookmarking and fall on the team that has him and just constantly like nipping at their toes, like, hey, like constantly trying to get Lab McConkey until, until they tell me, hey, dude. I'm not trading him. Stop bothering me. You're <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Which is, I could do very easily. Ask my wife. All right, let's get to our final segment, and that is our sell of the week. And uh, we had some, we had some good options here. And uh, once again, we're we're not necessarily when we sell, we're not saying we dislike this player. He's terrible. I mean, if it's Bo Nix, we might be saying that. But overall, we're not saying sure. that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Bo Nix had a flawless performance this weekend and won flawless. a game. There Knock you it off. <laughs> uh, but sometimes it's just, hey, this is this is the window where you might get a little more for this player than you might get other times. And we've belabored the point on this show that, man, tight end has been brutal. And then we had a savior arise and put up a 27-point game. And his name is Mr. Dallas Goddard. Goddard just had a monster game, but we know both A.J. Brown and then eventually during the game, we also lost Devonta Smith. Uh, so with such lackluster performances, there might be a team with Mark Andrews. There might be a team with Travis Kelsey. There might be a team with basically name any tight end. Sam Laporta. Trey McBride got hurt this week. Like name any team probably. And they're like, man, what am I going to do at tight end this week? Dallas Goddard might look pretty appealing, especially if both players are still out. So, guys, what would you be looking to get in return for a Mr. Dallas Goddard? I like Dallas Goddard. I like him a lot. Uh, love this tape coming out. It was devastating when he got drafted to the Eagles and Zach Ertz was there because uh, he was our number one tight end. And even then when he came out there, like I, I still liked him because you know, when Zach Ertz kind of fell off and they made Dallas Scott the starter, uh, it was still great. But then they brought in A.J. Brown and they brought in Devontae Smith. And it's like literally like we're watching a karate kid because like the, the leg got sweeped. So um, for me, like, yeah, as much as I like the player, the situation's not ideal whatsoever to put him in above any other tight end they can get for like much cheaper. And if you can attack the target, like Garrett just said, of a team that need, needs a tight end, you have, a, I think you have a two week good window here. We're one. Okay. He just, he's come up with this monster game. He's tight end one overall. So you can kind of sell that point to maybe somebody who's not as um, eager to, to, to overreact just of one bad game, but you could also sell it. Hey, Devonte Smith is in custom protocol. We still don't know if Dallas Goddard is going in there. Once uh, Devonte Smith got hurt with a concussion, Goddard was seeing a 50% target share. Once it went down. So he's going to be the number one read in an offense. And even before that, with, with one guy out the field, which is all I need, right? Like if it's no divide, if it's one or another, like I'm always going to fire up Dallas Goddard. If Smith 
or AJ Brown is out. But even because if one of those guys are out, he's seen about a 30% target share when it's the AJ Brown's on the field or Devontae Smith. So he's still a very viable option. Even this week with Devontae Smith was in there, he caught seven balls for 80 yards. It's just when he went out, but the 50% he caught three for 90. So I think you can use that as a selling point. Like, hey, he's still going to be the guy next week as well. And then even after this week, he's probably going to have another big game, be tight end one overall. Uh, I, I, did, I did the same thing when this happened. Uh, in the final year of Austin Hooper's year in Atlanta, like he oh. came up, had a real start. If you guys remember, started the season off real hot, catching a ton of football. Like number one tight end, yeah, number one overall tight end. And I traded him, and I can't. Remember, I was really happy with what I got, and like literally from that point on, like even the second half of the season, he really started just to fade off and turn back in that what Al, that Austin Hooper is. Now I'm not using that as a comparison. I was able to get a good return, is what I'm saying. I think Dallas got got her. It's a way better, more athletic tight end than uh. Off super, but I do think the production when Devontae Smith and AJ Brown are on the field, which are both seen like they're gonna be back, you know, at the very latest two weeks from now, probably as both of them on top of the field there, which then is gonna you're probably gonna see regression again out of Dallas Goddard. So I would kind of just seize the moment and trade what I can get. And you could probably allocate those points elsewhere with definitely the tight end market right now. Like you get Mike Gasicki for way cheaper and get probably get the production that Dallas Goddard would give you on a week in, week out basis average with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith in the lineup. I mean, all that's well said. I don't, I don't have a lot um, to add to that because uh, you, you nailed pretty much all, all the points. Obviously the 27 point game is a perfect sell opportunity. And the fact that Dallas Goddard literally has one, one season, it was his rookie season that he's been healthy the entire year, I think just gives it more reason to go out and make, make this sell now and make it uh, before an injury pops up. Cause it's it's death taxes and Dallas Goddard getting injured at one point during the season. They're all they're all basically for sure. It's going to happen. Um, so so go out and, and trade him now while he's while he's kind of riding that high off that twenty seven point um, game this past week. Love it, love it. Well, that uh that wraps up our our show for the week. So, Rich, take yeah, us out. Pre- Appreciate y'all listening. Uh, if you want to hook a homie up, get to your rating and review page on iTunes, wherever you listen, leave us a review. Uh, let us know how we're doing. Really helps the algorithm out there. So we always appreciate the rating and reviews. Uh, I like to read the reviews, not just the stars out there. Even when they're talking smack, the hate fuels me. It just fuels me. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody out there. We'll see you next week. Hopefully we have another light injury week but you know remember Fingers crossed. five weeks are coming up after this things are starting to get real these trades are going to be uh you know starting to come real important and that's why we're next week we're going to break down kind of like this positional value and see where we rank these players uh in dynasty fantasy football so we're we'll back next week and i'll be uh coming right off I'll, I'll just see how i am on the show because i get fly in tuesday morning from vegas at like 6 30 a.m so we'll see how i podcast on tuesday i might be alive i might be 50 percent deceased we'll find out He might be cooked, totally cooked. Uh Adios.